Well, hello, welcome to the theology study. So just a quick announcement before I get into that is due to my schedule, I'll be only uploading theology studies on Wednesdays for a while. Uh, <clears throat> just, you know, pretty busy, a lot going on and it'd be easier to do it once a week. So that's what's happening. Now, we had, as we had been talking, we, we've been talking about the resurrection of Christ. And I want to transition to discuss the ascension of Christ because, you know, the resurrection leads to the ascension. And <clears throat> the first aspect that I would like to discuss, starting with as we start this discussion of the ascension of Christ, is that Christ ascended to a place. Now, you might not think that's an important distinction, but in our day and age, with all kinds of theories and new age uh, beliefs and, and a lot of just weird stuff out there, it's important that we identify that scripture makes the point of referring to heaven as a place. And, you know, I, I think that's an important aspect of being a follower of Christ. To truly be a follower of Christ, you must follow Christ. And that means that we accept what Christ believed. And as Christ referred to heaven as a place, and as Christ referred to, to different uh, hell as a real experience and all of these kinds of things, we accept what Christ believed about those different topics. And that's what we want to remember. So if we were to just look at a couple of the, script, the scriptures that mention the ascension of the Lord, uh, Luke writes about it in the, at the end of it, the Gospel of Luke and at the beginning of Acts. And so if I were to read, first of all, I want to read uh, from Luke 24. I'm going to read verses 50 and 51. It says, Then Jesus took them to a place near Bethany. There he raised his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken to heaven. And then, of course, in Acts, Luke develops that concept a little more. Uh, chapter 1, verses 9 through 11 it says, after he had said this, he was taken to heaven. A cloud hid him so that they could no longer see him. They were staring into the sky as he departed. Suddenly, two men in white clothes stood near them. They asked, why are you men of Galilee standing here at, looking at the sky? Jesus, who was taken from you to heaven, will come back in the same way that you saw him go to heaven. Now, remembering that Christ is the firstborn of among many. We, uh, we can look at the ascension and recognize that it points to what awaits us, that heaven is a place. And when we think of ascension, it's not just like this transference of a spirit, but it's an actual resurrection. You know, the, the final day, that great and final day when the Lord calls us and we are caught up to meet him in the sky, that's a real event that resembles the ascension of the Lord because he's the firstborn among many. And so we get that we too shall ascend on that great day when we're caught up to meet him. And, and we see that. And that's in, when the dead in Christ shall rise first and we'll gather and we'll be caught up to meet him. Uh, there's a real resurrection of the body of Christ. And he will come back, the angel said, in the same way he went. So we see this real thing. Now this narrative in both places describes an event that is meant to show the disciples that Christ, Jesus Christ, went to a place. And I think that's important. He did not suddenly disappear, never to be seen. Uh, rather, he gradually ascended and then being hidden by a cloud from their sight. And, and that's, we get that in the narrative, that they're watching him go. Uh, that's not, oh, he just disappeared from us and was no more. They watched him ascend to heaven until a cloud took him. And this was then what we see a physical rather than metaphysical event. And a lot of people don't think that through, that the ascension of Christ was a physical event that took place in their literal, real world. It wasn't metaphysical. It wasn't symbolic that Jesus ascended physically to heaven. And, and that's what this narrative in scripture describes, a physical ascent of Jesus in a human body to heaven. Uh, that's powerful stuff. 
and it's quite miraculous. And instantly, they all saw the same thing. And, and that's cool because, um, <clears throat> you know, someone says, oh, it was a hallucination. When's the last time you heard of everybody having the exact same hallucination? Of course not. That's not what takes place. They all saw it physically take place. That's a manifestation of reality. And this, the, thus the ascension of Christ is a real event. And because he's the firstborn among many brethren, the resurrection and ascension of the body of Christ to be with the Lord is also a real event that we yet await. Now, surprisingly, some hesitate to affirm that heaven is a real place. And even in the evangelical realm of the church, there are those who have a problem with heaven being a real place or that Jesus ascended to that place. My issue has always been, why would you have a problem with something that scripture makes clear? I, I don't think a Christian should have a problem with something scripture makes clear. Now, I get it. There are people out there, uh, they dream things. But the problem is their dreams don't match scripture. And, and you know, so they're just more nightmares than dreams. And and I'm not really interested in in pseudo knowledge i'm not really interested in people who have think they have some special insight through a vision or a dream that the the rest of us can't have uh, i think really we just need to follow the scriptures and rejoice in them because they are tried and true and jesus faithfully endorsed the scriptures and and then peter endorsed the scriptures so even when we think about the writings of paul they're in the new testament because peter called them scripture so, and he, remember, Jesus said, your name will be Peter on this rock. I will build my church. Therefore, Paul's writings made it into the New Testament. Now, um, I'll admit that we cannot see where Jesus is. But, you know, I can't see the center of the Whirlpool galaxy. Uh, you know, we can see pictures of it uh, that that Hubble telescope took. But those pictures, incidentally, that we see are 23 million years old by the time we see them. It took light that far long to get to the telescope. So uh, we can't in real time see those things. We don't know where heaven is. I can't see the, I can't see a lot of things. I can't see, well, I can see Mars with the telescope some days. But, you know, there are aspects of the galaxies that we just can't see. Um, that doesn't mean they're not there. We just can't see them. And when we think about heaven as a real place, we can't see where Jesus is. We don't know exactly where that is or what that looks like. But we do know the scripture affirms it as a real place. <clears throat> and, and not being able to see where Jesus went does not mean that he passed into some ethereal state of being that has no location. And that's the problem. You know, we want to make sure that new ageism doesn't creep into the church. It doesn't belong there. And, and mysticism doesn't belong in the kingdom of God because God's not calling us to be mystics. He's calling us to be Christians. The ascension isn't a mystical event. It's a real event that took place in the physical realm when Jesus ascended to a place and the disciples were watching it happen. And so we see that now Jesus also identified heaven as a place. He said in John 14 verses two and three, he says, my father's house has many rooms. If that were not true, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. Then I will bring you into my presence so that you will be where I am. And that scripture connects to the very ascension. And because he describes, you know, the, his father's house that has many rooms and he's going to prepare a place and he's coming back for us. Then he ascends in Acts 1 and the angels say, he's going to come back the same way he left. So we see those passages of scripture connecting as Jesus refers to heaven as a real place, a real place that we're going to go to. While we cannot say exactly where heaven is, Scripture often pictures people as ascending up into heaven or coming down from heaven. 
as the angels did in Jacob's dream. And in Genesis 28, 12 it says, he had a dream in which he saw a stairway set upon the earth with its top reaching to heaven. He saw the angels of God going up and coming down on it. Consequently, we are justified in thinking of heaven as up somewhere above the earth. Jesus also spoke of coming from above, ascending to the Father, uh, authority being given from above, uh, being born from above. All of these kinds of things are references to heaven being above. And incidentally, heaven's, hell is often referred to as being below. So those are interesting uh, dynamics that are there in scripture. We can't dismiss them. They're in the Bible, the inspired word of God. We accept that. And uh, we also see that the new, new Jerusalem will descend from heaven. And we see that in Revelation 21 too. It says, uh, <clears throat> when I saw the holy city, new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, dressed like a bride ready for her husband. So those are interesting passages. Now that's all I have for today. I just wanted to remind us that heaven is a real place and it's real according to scripture. Thus it is appropriate to comfort ourselves with that knowledge. And you know, we, we don't, as I said a minute ago, we don't need to let new age creep into the church. Uh, there's a lot of comfort when we think of heaven as a new, as a real place. And in these days where we are challenged with a lot of things, and many things that we're being challenged with remind you of the end times, according to scripture. So when we think about that, we better remember that heaven's in a real place. And, and I think about the old time songs. There are a lot of, uh, in the old time songs, I, I call them going to heaven songs. There are, I mean, I know a lot of songs. I, I don't know how many honestly. I put some in a book for our midweek services once and there were 50 songs in there that I know but I also realize there's a lot of songs that aren't in that book that I know and I would say 80 or 90 percent of those songs are going to heaven songs. There's something about the old time music that does a lot of going to heaven songs and and we need that. We need to remember we're going to heaven a real place because that's God's plan. And when we look at the things around us, we should be looking up to heaven because our redemption draws near. And we should be thinking about that reality that that day when we are caught up to be with him is getting nearer than it ever has before. And maybe the reason people cling to the earth too much is they think of the earth as real and heaven as pseudo real. And, and, and not really, they don't, they don't think of heaven as a reality in the same way, and we should. There's a big difference that takes place in your heart when you begin to view heaven as a real bona fide place that you're headed for. Lord bless you, and we'll see you next Wednesday for Theology Discussions.